What's up guys, Nathan Sutton back with another video and today we're talking to you moms out there and you dads. Today we're going to do a must-haves baby list. So we have two kids, we have another one on the way, so we thought what better time to come up with a list of things that are our must-haves because we're going to need some of them for this next baby. Mm, she's always thinking ahead. Yeah. We also wanted to give you guys a pregnancy update. So by the time that you watch this, I'll be 30 weeks. I can't believe how fast time is flying by. And if you've been following us for a while, you know that my placenta was blocking my cervix and I was having ultrasounds like every three or four weeks to make sure that it was gonna move. And it kept not moving, not moving. And the doctor told me like, this is the last appointment and if it doesn't move by now, it's probably not gonna move. So that was last week. I went to that appointment and it moved, thank God. So if any of you guys were praying for that, thank you yes. for praying. Did you tell them that if it didn't move, you'd have to have a C-section? In a previous video, yeah. So if it didn't move, I, it would just mean that I would have to have a C-section and potentially have to go into labor early. Like my, one of my friends just told me her friend had that placenta thing and they started bleeding really bad and they had to have an early labor. So definitely not ideal. So we're very thankful that that moved. Um, oh, and they said that he has so much hair that his hair was just flowing in the ultrasound. <laughs> Yeah, so I was getting the ultrasound, and the tech was like, oh my gosh, and I was like, what? Because she scared me. She's like, look at this, look at this, and she puts the cursor on his hair, and it's like flowing out behind him. It was pretty long. It was like this long. I wish you would have gotten a picture so we could show it, and I don't know, you know, when babies are in the womb, they have hair all over their bodies, and it falls off, so I don't know if that's going to stay, but that'd be pretty funny if he comes out with like super long hair. <laughs> yeah, so that, that ultrasound was at 28 weeks, and she just said she was really surprised at how much hair he has that early on. Mm. Um, also, huge, huge update is that he has a name. We have come up with his name. And the way we got his name is just, it's a God thing, I think. Yeah, we're going to do a whole video about that probably after he's here, I would assume. Just tell him the whole story of like how the name came to us and everything. So hopefully it suits him. So there's certain things that you're going to want when you become a parent. And some of those things are going to make your life a lot easier. Some of those, Most of those things. Yeah, most of those things no one's going to tell you about. But we're going to tell you about them today, right now. Because you, you're going to need all the help you can get. Some of these we learned along the way. Like he said, nobody told us. And then as we're like living the life, we're like, okay, why do we not have this? Mm -hmm. All right, so hit me. What's the first thing that they need as a parent? Okay, so Show these are going to be all out of order. There's no particular order that we're doing these things in. Some of them are obvious, some of them not so obvious. One of the things that I think you definitely need that we learned along the way is a changing station in your bedroom. Like not the baby's bedroom, because mm -hmm. that's the obvious thing to do. You obviously have one in their bedroom. We didn't think to put one in our bedroom. So when you're waking up in the night and you're doing those feeds and we're like changing him on the bed and we were bent over it, it hurt my back so bad. And he would pee on the bed as I'm changing him. He had even pooped on the bed because he would have like this projectile poop. It was so bad. Oakland is who, we're ta who I'm talking about. So anyway, yeah, when we figured that out, a changing station, and all that required was just getting a changing pad and putting it on top of our dresser. And then we just use the top drawer of our dresser to put diapers and stuff in. You don't have to like buy anything special. Just like put a changing pad on top of your dresser. Yeah, for you parents out there that are changing your babies on the floor and the my couch. My sister, yeah. McKenna. Her sister does this. I did that. She's I had, done it for six years. I have no she's idea why. But, diapers for six years. <laughs> um, you guys are living the hard life. It's so hard. Yeah, and then the next thing would be Moms on Call. We've definitely talked about that probably multiple times in our videos. That's just a book. And they do not pay us for this sponsorship. We are just promoting We them. are just passionate about Moms on Call. <laughs> Life-changing. It's just a book that gives you tips about everything, really. It's great for being a new parent because it tells you like how to bathe them and what to do if they're fussing and how to take their temperature, like everything. But the most important thing in the book is a schedule. It's a sleep schedule. We followed it. We had both of our babies sleeping through the night at like eight weeks. 12 hours through the night at eight weeks old. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, so we, we love that book. I would definitely say that's a must have if you haven't heard of it. Sleep to me is like the found. While she's pulling up the list, I'll just talk about sleep. Sleep is like the foundation as a parent. If you are not well rested, everything else is gonna crumble. So you got to get that foundation. How are we as parents going to get the most amount of sleep possible? And when we first got Oakland, 
Um, we were Scott of. <laughs> <laughs> we were doing the stupidest thing. We were like both up at the same time in the middle of the night, and then we were both sleep deprived. So what made a lot more sense is for Sutton to be up all night, and yeah. then, <laughs> and then that way I'm well rested, and then when I wake up in the morning, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Wow, you really hate for that one. Yeah. You guys are always coming after him. <laughs> That's a good one to get him on. <laughs> Another thing that I would say is a must have is onesies with a zipper. I know the ones with the buttons, they're cute and all, but I'm telling you, when you have that baby, you're not going to be reaching for the ones with the buttons. I found myself going through the drawers like avoiding those. If I saw buttons, I was like, nope, 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 because you change so many diapers, you're not going to want to unbutton those things multiple times a day. Just get them with the zipper. With the footies is great because mm. if you can't really put socks on them. They'll kick them off. Mm. And then even extra bonus is if they have those things that flip over their hands that make the mittens. We were putting mittens on Oakland, but his arms were so chubby that the elastic band was like too tight on his wrist. So we got the ones that went over his hands and it's just so great. And they can't scratch their little face. Yeah, I got one for you guys. Uh, this one's kind of a given, but maybe it's not obvious to some of you is... Uh, cameras in their room mm -hmm. setting up cam is that really obvious does everyone do that i don't know yeah well, well cameras slash monitors because i had monitors on there monitors are a great thing to have too oh yeah yeah just so you know you don't have to go in there and check on them You've got cameras you can just look at them and the monitors you can hear them so like if you were going to go outside you could just hook the monitor to your pants or whatever and you can hear them to make sure that everything's good mm -hmm. another thing is a dock -a -tot. it's just like a cushion that we would sit on the couch and lay a minute. It's just nice to have a little spot where you could put them down and know that they're safe. Yeah. <laughs> because it seemed like when we didn't have like this baby proof house, there was nowhere to put him. But when we had that dog tie, we just put it on the couch and he would take naps there and stuff. And it was really mm. nice. Yes. Something I don't suggest, but that is really common is like a swing type thing. Like having a swing. We had a mamaru. We rarely used it. But we were just talking about how we didn't want to spoil them with movement because when they're sleeping, they don't get to move all the time unless you're, you want to be up all night. Mm -hmm. So we wanted them to get used to and like just sleeping, being still, and they did. And they never even really put up a fight about it. Mm -hmm. um, but that's something that I feel like it's just such a normal thing to get. Like people think, oh, I need a swing or I need somewhere to set them down, get to a dog tot to set them down so they don't get used to that movement and feel like they have to have it. My younger sister just told me that her baby is not now like not sleeping that great in his crib and he just wants to be in that swing because he likes the movement. It's like, yeah, you just set yourself up for that one. Yeah. <laughs> Something that's not the most obvious thing, this is one that we miss, is when it comes to strollers, we got a stroller for one baby, which it was an awesome stroller. It was so nice and so lightweight, but 16 months later, here comes Halston and now we have to sell that stroller and get a double stroller. So I would say, if you're having a baby and you already plan to have multiples, I would just go ahead and jump to that double stroller or whatever multiple kind of stroller because you're going to need it eventually and a single is just a waste of money. And the one that we have now is a, I think it's a City Select baby jogger. And so you can have one baby on it. Like it doesn't look like it's for two, but then when you have two, there's attachments and you can make it for two. So I would definitely recommend doing that. Save yourself a little bit of money. Another one that we didn't think of is having formula on hand. Like I just had the plan of I'm going to breastfeed this baby and everything's going to go great because that's how I've seen it on Instagram. It's like nobody has trouble. No. <laughs> there was one night that it was, we were struggling. I was crying. Oakland was crying. It was horrible. I was so stressed out. Like he hadn't eaten and you know, Go he's Mr. Google. He's like over there Googling like if they don't eat it's gonna cause brain damage and all this It stuff. literally says if they a newborn goes like I think five hours or more without milk, they're gonna it could cause brain damage and I was like oh my God. Yeah, I don't even know if that's true. Google's like the worst thing ever, but yeah, we were just stressed out like what do we do? Because I didn't have formula, I didn't even think about that. Thank God my sister lives in her neighborhood. I called her crying, I'm like, Help me. And she brought me some formula, so it's definitely a good thing to have on hand. Even if you have zero intentions of using it, at least you have it, in, just in case. Yeah, and I was kind of one to always think, oh, my baby's never having formula. And I still, I still definitely want our babies to be breastfed as much as possible. But, you know, like Sutton and all her sisters, they were never breastfed. They, you were just formula fed, and you turned out fine for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, you know, for, for all of you formula haters out there, you know, I 
just encourage you to relax if your baby has to have a formula every once in a while. Now he encourages it. When we had Halston, oh, yeah, I think it's kind of a good idea. Like it's a little supplement thing, you know, because every like fifth bottle, he's like, you should give him formula. Now. Especially if you know you as the mom eat nothing but pizza and ice cream, you might be lacking <laughs> some nutrients in your milk, uh, like Sutton, and a little formula might help out every once in a while. All right, so the next thing that I would really suggest is getting a bedside sleeper, which is just like this little bed that pulls up next to your bed that like kind of meshes seamlessly with the mattress of your bed. And that way, uh, you know, when I'm getting up in the middle of the night, I got I just roll over and be like, come here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people like to sleep with their babies in the bed, but that just scared us. I know that a lot of people do that, but for us, that wasn't going to work. I just feel like I would not sleep good knowing I could like roll on them or something. I don't know. So it's really nice to have that. They're right there and they're at the same height as you and everything. You can just reach over and get them. Mm -hmm. Another one that I never thought about until we had kids, and this isn't really necessarily about the baby, but more so for you, is just like pre-made meals. If you make yourself some meals or if friends, if you if your friend is having a baby, bring them a meal. Because when I had a baby... And people brought me meals. I was like, oh my gosh, I feel so bad that I never did this for anyone because I didn't think about it because I didn't have a kid, so I didn't really know what it was like. But, but it's wow, so nice. it is a lifesaver to just not have to worry about making dinner. So either make yourself some pre made, like frozen meals that you can make, or have some friends and family bring you food. If you're having, if your friends have a baby, bring them food. Next thing would be a baby bath. So a little some like thing that you can sit in your sink and lay your baby on to bathe them on because I tell you a little slippery bald baby in water and soap become they like a little they're like trying to hold soap. They're so <laughs> slippery. <laughs> they just slip right out of your hands. And yeah, so, we messed up with Oakland because we had one it was like a basically like a mini bathtub that we would put in the sink and we would have to hold his head up because it was just flat yeah but then with halston we learned that lesson and we were like we're not doing that again so we got another one i'll link it below but it's like Incline. at an angle yeah so they can just sit there alone and you can have both of your hands to do all the things that you have to do another thing is balmex so there's this thing called balmex <laughs> for those of you that have never heard of it it's like a little jar of ointment and that stuff cure it seems like it cures anything anything you just, and you can't overuse it you just get a debt like a huge glob and swipe it on their butt and <laughs> you'll never have a red booty in your house it's for yeah it's for like diaper rash which happens a lot yeah and it's painful so you want to do something to help them and it takes away the pain and it like fixes it literally overnight yeah so any kind of rash or redness or whatever just put balmex on it and you'll be good to go yeah it's good to have that on hand before your baby comes because you don't want to need it and not have it and then another thing is this sleep suit called a magic merlin obviously when they're baby babies you're going to swaddle them and stuff and we never really found a really great swaddle that we love but we were just on the countdown to the days that we could put them in that magic merlin and it's basically like a cloudy sleep suit that just it's like a big marshmallow <laughs> yeah it's just like a marshmallow like put them in a marshmallow but they can't they can't like startle themselves awake and they just slept so good it was from when we got to put them in that, that they were like sleeping through the night. And then one other thing that we didn't do that a lot of people do, I would say like maybe 99% of people do, is, do you know what it is? A passy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We had them. Oakland wasn't really interested because we would try it. He didn't really care for it. Halston kind of liked it, but we stopped it weeks in because we were like, we don't want our lives to revolve around this passy. To where if he drops it at night, he just cries. And thankfully, he was an easy transition. He didn't really care that we took it away. But I think it's because we did it so early. So I, I, it, it's like a blessing and a curse. It's so nice when they're crying that you can just pop that thing in and they're happy. But then it's a curse in the night when they're waking up because it falls out. And not because they're hungry, but just because they dropped their passy and you're just constantly having to put it back in the house. Yeah, my personal take on it is to use it as a tool and don't be used by it. Because like, if you're out to dinner every once in a while, you finally get to go out to eat. Or you're in the car and you're trying to talk to someone on the phone and they're just crying. I feel like those are the moments to use a passy when you really are desperate and you need it. And then, you know, but if you use it all the time, that they'll... Yeah, it's a slippery slope. <laughs> so that's it.
Those are the that's things. It. That's all you need to know, and then you'll be ready to go. Oh, one other thing that I need to get is a cordless pump. I was using a Medela before. I have really bad mastitis issues, so if any of you guys, I'll probably ask this on Instagram too. If anyone has a pump suggestion for me, please give it to me. Cordless, because I'm is that gonna like need a, to get one. You like crank it? Like how do you no, do that? I guess you like charge it or something. And the, Oh, it's like electric? Yeah, you know how mine, I plug it in the wall. Um, but this one I can like bring it around and not have to plug it in. I thought you meant it was like a manual, like non... No. <laughs> like pump it. <laughs> yeah, so if any of you guys have a suggestion of that, I need one that has a lot of force pulling out, I would say. Because some people say that some of the cordless ones don't pull very hard. So anyways, if you got one for me... Let me know, because I got to get one. I got 10 more weeks for due date. 10 weeks? Goodness, man. <laughs> Not ready for that. All right, guys, that was the baby must-haves. I hope it was helpful to you. It's definitely helped us in our parenting journey. Yeah, we'll link the ones that we can find below in the description in case anyone's interested in getting one for themselves or a baby gift. Mm. Not sponsored. Not. But Amazon affiliate. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. That was Nathan Sutton sowing seeds of truth, love, and inspiration one view at a time. And those were our baby must-haves after having two babies. And I'm one on the way. <laughs> Practically professionals.